What is going on, beautiful people? Today, we are talking about how some narcissists struggle to fall asleep at night. Why do some narcissists stay up late every damn, see like every night? If you're new here, my name is Lee Hammock. I'm a clinically diagnosed narcissist, and welcome to another episode of The Narcissist Code. So boom, 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 boom. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Yes, why can't some narcissists sleep at night? I know if you, I know, so this is gonna be a little off topic right here because I know what you normally hear in the realm of narcissistic toxic abuse, narcissistic relationships, you hear about sleep deprivation, how some narcissists will keep you up at night, right? You'll hear about the sleep deprivation tactic where narcissistic people or sleep torture well, they will literally keep you up at night to argue, fuss, and fight, we, especially when you have something important coming up, especially when you try to hold them accountable. They just refuse to let you go to sleep because they're you hurt their feelings. You made them feel a certain type of way. So now they're just like, you know what? Hell no. You're going to feel this. You're going to deal with this. You're going to, yeah, you, you, this is part, this is going to be part of your life. You know, you're not, they won't let you go to sleep until the plans are, like, until they feel satisfied. You know what I mean? That's what they'll do right there. And you see the reason that a lot of them can do that is because they don't sleep at night. You know, even if they have to get up in the morning, they will mess with you. They, it, it, they can keep you up late at night because they don't, a lot of narcissists don't sleep well at night. And I will say this right here, because I know people will come on the video and just like, lead you, what the hell are you talking about? Da, 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 da. Look, this does not just apply to all narcissists. Some narcissists can sleep like a baby at night. And having trouble sleeping at night, does not make you a narcissist, y'all. I know people, y'all, some people take that and just like, well, Lee, I, I have, you know, I have a insomnia. Am I a narcissist? I'm an empath. I care. Like, no, it doesn't. <sighs> Goose fraba. It doesn't necessarily make you a narcissist because you have trouble sleeping at night. What you do, what you do throughout the day <laughs> is what makes you a narcissist. You know, what you, what you do throughout the day is what, is what makes you narcissistic, you know? And if you keep your partner up at night to argue and finish an argument, that doesn't necessarily make you a narcissist either. It's the intent that matters. Intentions. Intent. The real person that matters, y'all. Let me get it out of the way right now. I know people will see that and just be like, well, I don't sleep, I don't sleep well at night. I thought I was an empath. So I'm a narcissist. No. No. That's not what I said. That's not what I said. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but a lot of people fall into this space where they feel like, you know, they ask me the questions like my narcissistic ex or my narcissistic husband, my narcissistic partner, wife, whatever. They have trouble sleeping at night because y'all, I know people going to say the, the devil, the devil does his work at night. You know, the freaks come out at night. That's why narcissists have trouble sleeping at night. I think just for me personally as well, because this happens to me a lot is that we, it's hard. Our minds don't shut down. That's why it's hard for me to meditate. That's why you might get a lot of narcissists that it's hard for them to meditate because they can't shut, we can't shut our minds down. Our minds are running a mile a minute. There's always, we're always thinking of a lot of different things. There are a lot of nar narcissists, including myself, that have other diagnoses as well. You know, it's just not narcissistic personality disorder that I'm diagnosed with. I also have general anxiety disorder and, um, well, oh, general and in general anxiety is a disorder and depression as well. So sometimes I'm just too depressed to go to damn sleep. I feel like I'm failing. I feel like nothing is good enough. I didn't. I feel like I didn't have a good enough day. I feel like I could have done more. So I can't go to sleep because I feel like I could have done more. But then you know what happens? I'll end up on the phone scrolling and then doing less. You know, I like I can maybe I can write a little bit. I'll scroll on Twitter for 30 minutes. I had to delete, I just deleted Twitter last night because of this. I'll scroll on Twitter for an additional 30 minutes and I'll look at the clock. I'm like, man, I've been scrolling for 30 minutes. Oh my God, I wasted more time. So now I'm more anxious. Now I'm more depressed because I, st because I stayed up later and didn't get anything else additional accomplished. You see how that works? It's crazy how that works sometimes, y'all, within that space because that's the mindset of a lot of narcissistic people. Like, damn, like we can't, you know, we struggling to do this already, but like, we we didn't have a good enough nothing we do is good enough anyway like we don't think anything that we do is good enough anyway we're, we're always looking for more so no matter what we do it would seem like it's not enough so when we get ready to go lay down to take our peaceful slumber 
like a vampire, like a, or like a bat, and try to sleep upside down or something like that. Uh, <laughs> you know, you get a little narcissistic bat that sleeps upside down in the closet. Uh, it just we can't shut our minds off. We feel like we failed, right? We feel like we failed throughout the day. We could have done more. We we did we didn't do enough, even though we did everything we did. We could y'all we could have a to do list full of stuff and get everything done and still feel like we could have done something different. For, we forget something right before we go to bed. We forget something um, that's on there. Right? We forget we we forget something and add something else to the to do list. Now we feel like the whole day is ruined. So now we get depressed. Now we get anxious and now we can't go to sleep. Eventually, somebody. Eventually, we fall asleep. Well, mo- most of us do fall asleep, but eventually. But it's just like it's just that constant mind running, like literally a mile a minute, a one minute mile. You know, Rodney Rogers, Roger Bannister ran that four minute mile. We run our minds are running one minute miles. We are just booking it. We are booking it seriously. <laughs> Fifteen second intervals. But that's cr- it's crazy how that works, though, y'all. I know what people are going to say. Like, Lee, is there anything we can do? Look, we can can we clap cheeks or something like that and help them put them to sleep? You can clap cheeks with them and they still stay up, y'all. They'll be up looking at you, staring at you. I didn't clap the cheeks right. I failed in this position. Like the mind works weird, y'all. I'm telling you. You feel like you're disappointing everybody in the world. You feel like you're disappointing not only yourself, you're disappointing everybody in the world, so you can't go to sleep. Because this is one of the signs of the, the depression part of it. You know? It really, really is. And again, if this sounds like you, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're a narcissist. Y'all, I'm just telling you, I know people that oh, sound like me, Lee. I feel like I'm letting the world. Y'all, it doesn't necessarily make you a narcissist, but a lot of narcissists do this. Um, that's the mindset right there. It really, really is. It's hard as hell to sleep, sleep, go to sleep at night and shut your mind off when you feel like nothing you do is good enough. Nothing anybody else done did it was good enough, you know? And it's just like, if something, if you have something big the next day or you have a stressor, a major stressor that's planned out the next day, you get so hyper focused on failing at it or it not being good enough or doing your job good enough that you stay you can't go to sleep. So you you actively like we're actively self sabotaging ourselves by not allowing our minds to shut down and not going to sleep. So then if we have something to do tomorrow that's important, now we're tired when we do it. So it's it's kinda of like a self fulfilling prophecy. We think we not we we don't think we're gonna do the task tomorrow good enough. So we stress about it and we're paranoid about it the night before, right? So we don't sleep and then we might get an hour or two of sleep and then we go we go to the job or the project the next day and we're tired and we like I said we're already then we do the job half-assed you know then we don't do the job as good enough then we don't do the project as good enough then we don't do the work as good enough and then we fail at it so it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy and then you go to you go home that night right after you failed at that project or whatever or you didn't do good enough on it and even if you did do good you just feel like you could have did better and then you get mad and then you're like, I failed at that project. You hyper focus on that. So now you can't go to sleep. You see, it's just like we, it's hard for narcissists to let things go. It's hard for us to be content. It's hard for us to be satisfied and whatnot. It really, really is. And like I said, it has way less to do with y'all. I know y'all, I know the partners and the kids of narcissists. I know you're like, is there anything we can do? Yo, you can try to be there for them, but sometimes they'll start to lash out on you. They start to lash out on you when their minds are running a mile a minute. They will take their anger and their frustration out on you because they feel like they'll look at you. Now you're a target. You just made yourself a target. It's kind of like, what's that movie? Um, um, a quiet place. I think it's called a quiet place where the, the creatures attack you if you make noise. So it's just like the narcissist, my, my, the narcissistic person's mind is running a mile a minute, right? And everything is quiet. And then you, you say, hey, babe, and then I attack you. You could have just played the quiet game and being okay. You see what I'm saying? But I know with your partner, you're a good partner, you're a good parent, you're a son, whatever. I know your daughter. I know y'all care. I know it's just coming from a place of you caring, you know? So, but it's just like your empathy, your compassion, that's when it gets turned, that's when it gets turned against you right there. That's when they, it, it's, it, be, it becomes a weapon against you. That means your compassion, your empathy kind of put you in harm's way now. You know? It's just like trying to save a, uh, so you're trying to save somebody that's trying to unalive themselves, and then you also get unalive. Like they they land on the, they they are like on the train tracks or something like that, and refuse to move, and they're too heavy. And now you just put yourself in danger because you are a you, know, you impact you empathetic. You care about that person. You said I know that I know was, I know that was bleak, right there. But that's how some narcissist minds work, y'all. 
Like, you can't move them off this topic. You can't move them off this subject. You know what I mean? Is that I, do I sleep better now that I'm in therapy? Yeah, I, I sleep better now because I'm able to kind of shut my mind down more because I'm, I have the ability to be more content and okay with whatever job I've done that day. Or even if I have a stressor tomorrow, I will still turn my, force myself to turn my phone off and just close my eyes until I fall asleep, you know, in the darkness and just close my eyes and, you know, count little empaths jumping over the fence, you know, just count little, my little, little, little empathetic, compassionate people jumping over the fence, little narcissists jumping over the fence. Instead of sheep, we can't, we count narcissists and empaths jumping over the fence, you know, <laughs> but that's how it goes though. Yeah. That's what I'm just telling you. That's, this is why I know some people will take it spirit. I know some people will take it spiritual. Like lady, the reason they can't sleep because they got a devil in them, you know, the reason they can't sleep because they, uh, they have the evil and the, the devil don't let them sleep. You know, God, God, God don't give sleep to the, the God don't let the wicked sleep. So that's why they can't sleep. Lee, I know Lee, we get it. We know you're a narcissist and you, you know, you trying to, you trying to spread awareness, whatever, but like the devil don't let them wicked bastards sleep. That's why they can't sleep. That's why they can have trouble sleeping right there. You know, but that's part of it right there. That is part of it. And like a lot of narcissists do struggle to sleep at night. It's just like, it really is like, you feel like you haven't done enough. You feel like too much, the world is too much or whatever. And you end up self fulfilling that prophecy because now you go into the, the next day tired and that cycle continues, you know, unless you just pass out and get, slip, get a melatonin or something like that. And then you pass out, you know, you need a sleep aid or something like that. But then you get some narcissists that drink themselves to sleep. If the only way they can go to sleep is with a 12 pack or a six pack or something like that. But you see how that becomes an issue as well, you know? That absolutely becomes an issue as well. So it's just like, it really is a wild dynamic when you have to live with somebody like this, when you're trying to survive with somebody like this. It really, really is, y'all. Well, thank y'all for tuning in today's episode, y'all. I truly appreciate every single one of y'all because as much as y'all learn from me, I learn even more from you. Check out my mini courses and my support groups. Link is in the description and bio. Um, subscribe here as well. Five stars on Amazon and uh, Apple Music uh, and Spotify. Thank you so much. Mental Hillness is out. Peace. Thank you so much for making it to the end of my video. You are a mental healness rock star and I appreciate you for being here. If you haven't already, make sure to click on the screen to subscribe to the channel and watch another one of my videos in my playlist. There's also a link available up here for you to purchase my kids book. Remember, it's not your fault on Amazon. So check that out. Thank you. I will see you in the next video. Peace.